everyone. Welcome to another episode of Brain Scratch Case Cracked. I'm your host, John Lorden, and today we are looking into the case of Nedra Nance. She likes to go by Nettie. Um, but let's take a look at this case. And for any of you Searchlight fans out there, I think this case has a very important message, particularly about never giving up hope. All right, so uh, Nettie Nance was born July 15th, 1987. She lived with her mother, Anugeta, also known as Ann Petway, in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And when Nettie was about 10 years old, she had a half-brother arrive and she went to school while living in Bridgeport, Connecticut all through her high school years, but after that her family moved to Atlanta, Georgia. Through her upbringing, uh, Nettie always felt a little out of place. She felt like she didn't fit in with her family particularly well. And as she was getting older, she was noticing that she didn't really seem to share very many physical traits with her mother. All of that came to a head in 2005. Uh, Nettie got pregnant and was trying to get prenatal care. She asked her mother for a copy of her birth certificate. Her mother eventually gave her one and she handed that over to the authorities for the insurance. She heard back from those authorities that the birth certificate she had provided was actually forged. She was really upset. She didn't know what to think. Um, she went and confronted her mother about it and her mother revealed that she was not actually Nettie's real mother. She told Nettie that Nettie was abandoned by a drug addict. So Nettie gave birth to a little girl named Samani and moved out on her own, but she kept researching her past. And this is a search that would go on for about five years. Eventually, she looks at the website for the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and she's looking through cases there. She comes across a picture that uh, reminds her a lot of her daughter uh, as a baby, and of course, she's thinking that that could possibly be her. She did, she was right, she did it. She basically cracked her own case. Um, after 23 years, she found out that she was actually Carlina White, a baby missing since 1987. Uh, DNA confirms this. She is actually the daughter of Joy White and Carl Tyson. She was only 19 days old when she was taken from the Harlem Hospital. Uh, she was there being treated for an infection. Apparently she had swallowed some fluid um, during her birth and she was sick. She had a really bad fever. Um, her parents took her to the hospital. They were giving her antibi antibiotic treatment through an IV. And Anne uh, was acting like a nurse in the hospital. She was dressing up like a nurse and she had been doing this for several weeks. And apparently at some time in between, I think about 2.30 and uh, 4 a.m., she disconnected the IV from Carlina and took her out of the hospital. Now the hospital actually did have a uh, closed circuit television system, but unfortunately the camera system was not operational at that time. All they had was uh, a description from people's words about what Anne looked like. They did put together a police composite sketch. Um, it was decent. I've compared the sketch to real photos of Anne, but I don't think it was particularly strong. Carlina was actually raised only 45 miles away from where her parents lived. And her parents uh, would eventually file a lawsuit. Um, they sued for $100 million. It settled out to $750,000 in 1989. When, the, when they got the money, uh, each of the parents took some. They had previously separated, actually only about a year after Carlina went uh, missing. Um, I think they took about 120000 each or something like that, but they had put over $400,000 of it into a trust specifically for Carlina as long as she would be found before the age of 21. Unfortunately, Carlina was now 23, and she came to find out that the money was long gone. Her parents basically split it once uh, the trust had expired, and they 
they both spent the money on their own. So there was no money left over for her. She even tried to file a lawsuit to see if she could sue for herself. But effectively, the judge told her, your family and their attorney have already represented you on this matter. We cannot retry this matter. So there's really nothing she can do. As you can imagine, um, Feelings are a little rough between her and her biological parents. It seems like they're still rough. I found some current news stories where it seems like they're still struggling quite a bit. And I think just her trying to come back into a family after being gone for that long is already going to be very difficult. She was raised by someone else at that point, um, but it seems like they're still working on those issues. Uh, she actually still goes by Nettie because that is a name she says that uh, she chose for herself. That's It's a nickname. It's, it's not the name that Anne gave her, and it's not the name that uh, her mother gave her, uh, Joy. Anne was charged and sentenced to 12 years. I believe she's still currently in prison. Nettie actually says that she is not mad at Anne, and she expects that they will speak again when she gets out of prison. She still appreciates the good things that Anne did for her. Uh, if you are interested in this case, there is also a Lifetime movie about it called Abducted, the Carlina White Story. Um, from what I'm seeing in media, they're saying that this is one of the cases with the longest period of time between someone going missing and being reunited with their family, 23 years. So um, pretty exceptional, and I do hope that those families can come to grips with these, uh, with the experience that they've gone through. I just, I can't imagine what it's like to be in the parent situation. I can't imagine what it's like to be in Nettie's situation. Uh, in terms of a motive, Anne had several miscarriages and she was afraid she was not going to be able to have children. And that is why she decided that she needed to kidnap a child from the hospital. Um, she later did wind up having a child of her own, the brother that I had mentioned before, so it uh, seems like that fear might have not been totally founded. But apparently she did a pretty good job of raising Nettie to the point where, uh, you know, Nettie is, is ready to talk to her once she gets done serving her time. Really interesting case. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Case Cracked. I hope you're having a great day. Be sure to check out the next show that pops up on the Lord and Arts channel, and I'll see you there.